So glad that y'all are here. Bless you for being here this morning. Um, I'm so grateful, uh, Pastor Amber, preaching here this past Sunday and just a little bit of housekeeping. Not everybody in the scriptures that talks, uh, there's a scripture taken out of context that says women's supposed to be silent in church. And it was, Paul was actually dealing with a problem in Ephesus with, with women. But a lot of people like to take that out of context and uh, and kind of bully women pastors and preachers. And and I just want to say this, that uh, the position that we take here at the Lone Star Cowboy Church is to honor women in ministry. And it's the same position that is taken through the Assemblies of God. And there's an article in in the Assemblies of God of women in ministry and, and the position that we take. And, and we are very, very proud and, and thankful for our women pastors and our women in ministry here at the Lone Star Cowboy Church. Um, apparently not everybody uh, shares that same view, but I just want to say today that um, if that is not your view, I just invite you to, to, to read that. And if you can't uh, uh, agree with that, I understand, but don't be disagreeable and don't try to bully any of our women pastors because like in the words of Captain Carl and Lonesome Dove, we won't tolerate rude behavior. (laughs) I'd hate to be the one that stood before God and tried to silence half of his creation. We need women's perspective. And the scripture teaches that they're supposed to be under the covering of a man because we are the stronger sex. And it doesn't mean mentally stronger, but what it means is that physically stronger, we're the ones that are actually supposed to protect them. And so us men, it's our job to do that. And when we do that, then the kingdom of God goes forward. And that's, that's the reason I wanted to give a little bit of housekeeping. We've got some great, great women uh, pastors in this church and, and a lot of women in ministry. One of them happens to be my wife and, and that really puts a burr under my saddle blanket. <laughs> For all you visitors, um, it, it's good, just good to know who we are. <laughs> this morning, it, it's... Uh, the Lord willing, I want to preach to you the next three weeks about core values that over just in, in particular in my life that God, I believe God has put in me three core values. And I want to preach to you about those three core values over the period of the next three weeks, God willing. But this week, uh, I want to talk to you. There's two words that, that I want to title my message with is, is be ready. Uh, the scripture, Jesus said, be ready because the son of man will come at an hour that you think not. And it's important for us to understand the value of readiness. And uh, part of the reason that we can protect our nation is because we have to have a military and we have to be ready to protect our, what, what God has blessed this nation with. And it's important for us as a church to be able to protect who we are, but also to understand that, that we have a responsibility in and of ourselves to be ready because Jesus is going to come back and therefore the core value to be ready is uh, really a non-negotiable for me. Uh, We've got to do whatever it takes, amen, so that we can be ready. So I want to talk to you about that this morning in Matthew chapter 24, verse 44, we find a, a, a scriptural text here for the message. It says, therefore you also be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. The Bible says that Jesus will come again one day and that that the world as we know it today will end. We're not talking about the the zombie apocalypse. Not talking about that. Isn't it interesting how that Hollywood tries to mimic what God really does well? So there's a lot of ideas, there's opinions out there about the end times, but the Bible does give us details about what will happen. Uh, it advises us to be spiritually prepared for judgment at any moment and to put our trust in God that in the end, 
He will make everything right. Today, I want to talk about what the Bible says about the second coming of Jesus and a lot of the different events that surround his coming back. Uh, the, uh, in Matthew chapter 24, and just a little, I'm going to read a lot of scripture this morning, and I think it's important that we read a lot of scripture when it comes down to these things because uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. And when we read the scripture, it's always the truth. And he said, I am the life. And so we, we're talking about uh, the way, the truth, which is the word of God and the word that comes out of our mouth when we speak the word that God gives to us. And he is the life. Ultimately, eternal life is, is the reason we serve God is so that we can spend eternity with God. So in Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, it says, as he said on the Mount of Olives, talking about Jesus, uh, the, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming in the end of this age? And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. I'm, I'm not talking about like, like David Koresh and Jim Jones and all them boys and the little deal where you don't drink the Kool-Aid. Um, don't let anybody deceive you when it comes to the things of God, make sure that it's, it's right. For many, everybody say many. Yes. Many will come in my name saying I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars, rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in different places. And all these are the beginnings, it's just the beginnings of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up. This is the part we don't like to hear. They will deliver you up for tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Did you know that there are people in our modern day and age being martyred and killed because they believe in Jesus. It's really happening in our world today. And I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but our nation isn't really Christian friendly anymore, especially in the White House. They don't like, they don't like the moral laws of God. So we have to be ready and pay attention it says, for they'll deliver you up for tribulation, and many will be offended. I don't know that I've ever seen in my day and age any time where people got more offended over the littlest things in the world. People just look for ways to get offended today, but I don't know if you noticed that or not. Then it says they will betray one another and hate one another. There's a lot of hate in our world today. And because lawlessness will abound. That's what happens when you do away with the police department. It says the love of many will grow cold. The love, listen to me, the love of many, those oh, that love Jesus and love God, the love of many will grow over a period of time, will grow cold. What it is, it's a, it's a caution there. He's putting up a yellow flag and he's saying, pay attention that your love for God doesn't grow cold. Because he said, that's what's going to happen in the end time. There's going to be so many distractions out there in the world that the love of many, not just some, not a few, but many will grow cold. We got to pay attention. That's the whole message here. Verse 13, but he who endures to the end, the one who endures, it's not a sprint. Uh, it's not something that just happens. And is there anybody that enjoys uh, instant gratification? I thought so. 
He in, who endures to the end. This isn't something that just happens that we're happy about. Oh, that was so good. That was so, so much fun. No, it, we have to have endurance to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. I remember reading this as a young man, thinking, I don't know how in the world all of the nations of the world are going to hear the gospel of Jesus. And then we got the internet. Then we all got cell phones. Then we had the internet on our cell phones. And even kids in third world countries now have cell phones. There's a lot, the word is accessible, maybe not quite to everybody in the world, but it's getting awful close. It says, then the gospel will be preached to all nations. They'll have access to the gospel. It says, and then the end will come. I'm telling you, we're closer than we think. <clears throat> uh, so at this point in time, uh, we're going to move into the tribulation. We believe in it, that the scripture teaches that, that before the tribulation, that the church will be raptured. And the word rapture really isn't in the word of God, but it really means to be caught up. It says, it says that, that we will be caught up to be with the Lord, uh, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. It says the trumpet will sound, and the dead shall be raised imperishable. The dead will be raised. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up to be with the Lord. And then it says, so shall we ever be with the Lord during the rapture of the church. When we go to heaven, we will be with the Lord forever. No more temptation, no more, no more of this stuff, but all will be passed away. I have not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. His, yeah, his job is to prepare it. Your job is to love him. Get the love part right, and he'll do his part right. Well, he's going to do his part whether you do or not, right? Whether we get it right or not, God's going to get it right. So I'm excited about this. In verse 15, it talks about the tribulation, which is a, set, a period of seven years after the rapture of the church where there will be, there will be uh, judgment that God brings upon the world. Verse 15, it says, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation. The abomination of desolation, part of the abomination is that, there will, the, that the temple in Jerusalem will be rebuilt or there will be a place of worship where they'll begin, they'll, they'll bring sacrifices back because the Jewish nation and the Jewish religion, they didn't believe in Jesus at that point in time and they wanted to bring the sacrifices back and they will bring those back. But the, the Antichrist or the false prophet will set up his throne in Jerusalem and he will take over the temple and that the abomination will be, be that they will sacrifice uh, to the devil. And that's the abomination of desolation. So the abomination, abomination means the cause, something that causes disgust or hatred, and desolation means a state of complete emptiness and destruction. So this is the seven-year period of the tribulation will be a complete emptiness and destruction. And it's talked about by the prophet Daniel uh, standing in the holy place. And then it says, whoever reads, let him understand. It's one thing to read something. Anybody ever been in school and you read it, but you didn't get it? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because it, it seems like in the Bible, every day I have a new understanding or something, a light comes on. But he's saying, whoever reads, let, let him understand what God is saying to us. It says, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And this is talking like the first three and a half years of the, of the tribulation will be, 
will be very tough, but it won't be near as bad as the last three and a half years. And this is, this is moving forward into the last three and a half years. It will be a judgment on the world such as never, ever been before and never will be again. And so it's, it's, this, is, this, is the, this is tough stuff. So it says, but woe to those who are pregnant, to those who are nursing babies in those days, and pray that your flight won't be in the winter or on the Sabbath, for then will come great tribulation such as not such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, nor shall ever be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake those days will be shortened. So what he's saying is, is that there will be those who didn't go up in the rapture of the church and there will be those that are left behind. Some of you might have seen the movie, Left Behind. But those people, if they didn't take the mark of the beast or serve the Antichrist, uh, then they will make it through the tribulation, which will be, it'll be a tough deal because you can't buy or sell during the tribulation without the mark of the beast on you. You have the mark so you can buy. And I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but we are moving very rapidly toward a cashless society. And it's going to be a perfect setup for the Antichrist because in order to buy and sell, you will have to have this mark. So the barcode that they have at the grocery store when they figure out how much your food is, it'll be a barcode on you so that they will know whether you have taken the mark or not. My uh, little side note, my uh, uh, uncle, uh, he worked for IBM and he was part of the group that discovered the barcode and, and invented the barcode. And when he invented it, he went home and he was very distraught because he knew what the Bible said about the Antichrist, about the mark of the beast. And he said he was praying and he said, uh, Lord, I don't know if, if, if I should, we should even let this out into the world because this is, this is, this sounds like, like tribulation type stuff. And he, he said that the Lord spoke to his heart and he said, Don't, I, I just want you to know that I'm a lot bigger than anything you can create. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it really does wake us up though, doesn't it? I mean, you think of it, many, in our world today, we don't think about it so much because we're just like, oh, that's just the way it is. But it hasn't been this way 50 years ago. It wasn't anything like it is today. Amen. We're moving toward this thing that the Bible prophecy has been predicting for millennials. Millennia, not millennials. Well, some millennials. <laughs> Millennia, uh, over th thousands of years. We're going on. <clears throat> Verse 26, therefore, if they say to you, look, he's in the desert, do not go out. Look, he's in a, in a room, do not believe it. For as lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For whoever, the, wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Verse 29, talking about the coming of the Son of Man, immediately after the tribulation in those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. The sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with the sound of a great trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds and from, the, from one end of heaven to the other. That's us, because we're already in heaven. Y'all with me? He's gonna gather the elect from the four winds of heaven and we're gonna be coming back and this is the reason you need to learn how to ride a horse because we're going to come back on a white horse. <laughs> the only reason cowboy churches work is because we're trying to get everybody ready. <laughs> Verse 32. Now learn this parable from the fig tree when its branches had already become tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. 
You, so you also, when you see these things, know that it is near at the door. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will, not, will by no means pass away until all things, till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away. This earth as you know it will pass away. The heavens as we know it today will pass away. And no one knows the day or the hour, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the son of man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not know. They weren't ready. They did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. In other words, they weren't paying attention. They had be, begun to just think that this is all there is and that this is, this is, this is normal. And they quit looking for the coming of the Lord. By the way, that's the reason we do communion. As often as we do communion, we do show the Lord's death until he comes back, right? And so we have, when we have communion, it's so we can stir up this thing inside of us, this eternal thing that's in every, it's, it's in the heart of every person. Not everybody realizes it, but Eternity is put, Jesus said, in the heart of everybody. And, and whenever we stir up through messages like this or we have communion, we have this thing stirred up and we allow ourselves to understand that, that this world is not our home. That we're just passing through, that our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blues and that the angels welcome us to heaven's open doors and we just really honestly can't feel at home in this world anymore. Because the Lord is the Lord of this earth. He's the Lord of this world. And thank God, he's the Lord of our lives. Said they did not know until the flood came and also coming to the Son of so also, also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken, one left. Two women will be in the grinding at the mill, one will be taken, the other left. And it says, watch, therefore, for you do not know the hour your Lord is coming, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man will come at an hour that you do not expect. I want to say something here, and I just felt while I was reading that passport, I felt like I should say this. I feel like there, there's somebody here or maybe somebody watching online or both that you're thinking, I just can't believe that God would, would do that, that he would, he would send people to hell and that, 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 he would, that he would actually do it like that because I don't think that's right and I don't think that's a loving God. And, and that's the excuse that a lot of people use today. I just want to, I just want to, I want to, I want to, uh, address that mindset. My first point is that you're not God. You don't make the rules. Amen. And God's not waiting for you to approve of him or not. In our arrogance, we think we know better than God. And then we think that we're entitled to go to heaven. And if you ever been to, you ever been to a funeral... When they preach about the person being in heaven and everything, and you're like, I doubt it. <laughs> I don't think so. Who are they talking? They open, open the lid and see who they're talking about. <laughs> We're not entitled to spend eternity. Which it's not your, you don't deserve it. I, of all people, don't deserve it. 
But because of the grace of God, we can spend eternity with him because he loves us. But we first of all got to accept the word at face value and say, God, you know better than I go. No, by the way, it wouldn't be heaven, would it, if there's a bunch of murderers, adulterers, cussing God and everything. We don't want heaven like it is down here. So why would we think that we know better than God? So if, this morning, if you think God's not fair, I just want to challenge that. I feel kind of burred up a little bit about it. I've been burred up a little bit this morning about a lot of things. I'm telling you, God is a loving and a giving God, but he's not going to put up with our arrogance and our pride. Amen. He's not going to do it. He loves us, but he's not going to put up with arrogant pride. Okay, I'm just going to get, get off the, get, I'm, I'm off the sermon anyway. <laughs> and people go, well, what about God's grace? Let me tell you something about grace. Grace doesn't mean that there's no right and wrong. Yeah. Because if, if, if there was no right and wrong, you wouldn't even need grace. Grace says, yes, there is right, the way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. But then there's the way that, seem, that is right for God, and the way is life. So grace is there not because, not so we can have a license to do whatever we want to do, but grace is there to help you in the things that, you allow yourself or I allow myself to stumble with and, and God knows when we're trying and he's going to give us grace because we're human and because he loves us. But let's not ever feel like we're entitled to grace. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so that's a, God's work of redemption is an ongoing process the work of redemption and it's not like you just walk down the aisle and you accept Jesus as your personal savior and then you get your church uh, membership card you put it in your hip pocket and you go, go out there and live like the devil yeah. it ain't the way it works uh, God knows it's a process with us. And that's the reason for grace. And that's the reason that he, he contends with us and he wants to help us through our issues and through our problems because we all have them. Everybody say, I have issues. I, have issues. <laughs> I think y'all believe that because you said it with a lot of passion. Because <laughs> we all do, Right? But let's not come to church on Sunday morning and because we are putting our best foot forward trying to live for God, please don't let this message be a condemnation. Let it be a message of hope for you because God loves you. He's on your side. He's cheering for you. He wants you to get right and be right. He's your greatest cheerleader. It's an ongoing process. The final phase of the process of redemption began with the first coming of Jesus, and it will culminate events with his second coming. Let me, let me just address a little bit of misunderstanding. When, when Jesus comes back to, to, to receive his church and when we're caught up to be with the Lord, uh, Jesus, we will be caught up in the air to be with the Lord. Jesus won't come back to earth at that point in time. We will be, we'll meet him in the air. There's, a, there's an old song, and I didn't do it in the first service, but I, I love this old song. And so, you mind if I just sing a minute? Oh, there is going to be a meeting in the air, in the sweet, sweet by and by. Oh, I want to meet you over there in that home beyond the sky. <laughs> Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ear. Will be glorious, I do declare. 
for God's own son. He will be the leading one at that meeting in the air. Oh, there is going to be a meeting in the air, in the sweet, sweet by and by. Oh, I want to meet you over there in that home beyond the sky. Listen to me. Sun singing, you will hear, never heard by mortal ear. Will be glorious, I do declare. For God's own son, he will be the leading one at that meeting in the air. <laughs> you are so sweet. <laughs> Listen. I'm so grateful for the presence of God this morning. I'm looking forward to being with Jesus. I'm just grateful. Ah. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. I haven't got to my sermon much. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I am the way, Jesus said, I am the truth. Don't make up your own truth. Don't make up your own stuff. It's not like God's like, mm, never thought about that. God already knows he is the way. He is the truth, and he is the life. No man, listen to me, no man comes to the Father except through Jesus. You want to be a part of that meeting in the air? He's the way. He's the truth, and he's the life. No man comes to the Father. When will Jesus come again? Only God knows, not the angels in heaven. There'll be a rapture of the church. There'll be seven years of tribulation. We don't want to be there. There'll be, oh, and I didn't tell you this. There'll be, everybody will go through a time, a period at the end of that uh, seven year, at the end of the millennium will be, the millennium is a thousand years after the seven years. If you're taking notes, a thousand years where the devil will, will be bound for a thousand years and we will rule and reign with Jesus because over the earth there'll be a new heaven and a new earth and there'll be no, uh, no temptation at all. And those who come through the tribulation that made it through the tribulation there will be a final this, Satan will be released for a season it says at the end of that thousand years and then for those people who come through the tribulation or through the millennium and then there will be a judgment there's going to be a judgment the judgment seat of Christ to judgment the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment the judgment seat of Christ is for the Christians and what we will be judged is and I could read all this scripture but I don't have time will be judged according to the work that we have done in this body I mean we're going to be rewarded for what we do while we're here on this earth I don't know honestly what all of that looks like but it's going to be an eternal reward. My eighth grade Sunday school class teacher, he put it this way. He said that, uh, that we'll be given a crown of life. And he said there'll be a lot of jewels in a lot of people's crowns. And he said, and then you'll see people running around heaven with a, with a coat hanger on their head. Because <laughs> they didn't do nothing. Whatever that looks like, I don't know. But we will be rewarded and judged at the judgment seat of Christ. But the great white throne judgment is the judgment for those who have not accepted Christ as their personal savior, those who have rejected Christ. And, and it was interesting, there's a, there's a saying that uh, C.S. Lewis said this. He said, when you have to make a choice and don't make it, that in itself is a choice. You see, not 
accepting Jesus, not being proactive with your life and your eternal life by not doing anything, you're really doing something. You're, when we reject, it's not like we openly reject, but when he said we must accept him as our personal savior because we have all sinned. We've all, I know you probably think your sin is a whole lot worse than everybody else's, but that's not true. All of us have sinned in bad ways. I mean, the apostle Paul, he was a murderer. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus is coming back for those who have intentionally made up their mind. Live, die, sink, or swim. I'm going to serve Jesus. And we're going to meet him in the air. We are Christ's ambassadors in this world. Don't get too comfortable in this world because this world is not our home. We're just passing through and our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Be ready. I'm going to read this last scripture in 2 Timothy 2.5. It says, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive a victor's crown except, everybody say except. Anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. Our world and our culture today have, in, in the church world, my goodness, there are so many religions that are being made up today, you, you can't even keep track of them all. But it says if, if we want the reward, we have to compete according to the rules. Last year, they have a, uh, in December, they have a World Series finale, Team Roping World Series finale in Las Vegas. And uh, they give, they give a lot of money away at, at these ropings. I was able to compete in some of those ropings last year. In one of the ropings, there was 600 teams in the roping and they take the top 40 or 50 back for the short round. And uh, me and my partner were 10th high call. In other words, we were in the top 10 of the best times on three head of steers. And so we had a chance to win a lot of money. And so I'm head, I had the steer and he was healing. And I come out and I roped the steer and he come around the corner and he roped that steer really, really fast. And he had both feet in the steers. You have to rope, if, if, you get, if you miss one foot, it's a five second penalty. So he roped both feet, but just as he pulled his slack, the steer pulled his foot out and he wound up with, with one foot. Do you know how much that one foot cost us? $142,000. A hundred and forty-two thousand. You know what I wanted to do? I wanted to ride up to that flag man and say, he didn't mean, he didn't mean to lose that foot. I mean, honestly, we're not doing this on purpose. I mean, y'all know where I'm going with this, right? It says, unless you compete by the rules, there's an eternal judge that's going to judge whether we determined whether we were going to compete by the rules or we're, whether we were going to feel like we was entitled to things. Oh, man, I drove all the way to Vegas and I can't believe you just flagged. You know who won the roping? The one who competed by the rules and did the best job. It's your choice. It's my choice. As individuals, we make our choices every day. And I just want to help you. That's why we have church. Compete by the rules. Stop making up your own rules. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your word this morning. We know that... Uh, 
We know that you're here, Holy Spirit. Do in us, Lord, and in our hearts as you will so that we'll be ready because we know you're going to come back. So we, Lord, we just want to have our house in order, have our lives in order to the best of our abilities, but we need your help. I'd like for you to keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed for just a second. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says that we've all sinned and all come short of the glory of God. That means that we all have to intentionally make a decision to accept Christ as our personal Savior. Jesus put it this way. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone open, I'll come in and be with them. So what he's saying is, is that he wants to be a part of your life, but he's not gonna, he's not gonna break the door down to make you serve him. That's just not the way God operates. This morning, he wants you to love him because you want to love him. He wants you to invite him to come into your heart, to come into your life. If you've never done that, maybe if you have, you just really haven't been living for him. Simply by raising your hand, say, preacher, I need Jesus in my heart. I need to make him the Lord of my life. I know I, I need Jesus. Slip your hand up high. Anybody want to put a Bible in your hand? Anybody? Preacher, that's me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Preacher, that's me. Anybody? Raise your hand up high so I don't miss you. Yeah, thank you, partner. I'm so proud of you. Bless your heart. Leave your hand up till we get a Bible in it, please. Yep. Anybody else? Preacher, that's me. Don't be ashamed. My goodness, this is, this is, this is not the place. We're all family. Anybody else? See? Raise your hand up high. Anybody? Yep. Preacher, me. Preacher, that's me. The greatest gift known to man. Anybody else? Everybody that raised your hand, I want you to look up at me. Would you mind coming up and let me pray with you? Back over here, come on up and let me pray with you. Back in the back, come on up and let me pray with you. I'd be honored to. Come on, buddy. Come on. Love to have you over here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, buddy. I'm proud of you. Sometimes just take the first one to get up. Anybody else? Come on, if you raise your hand, come on up. Let me pray with you. I am so proud of you. Thank you. You did the right thing. <laughs> Man, you know what? You know what? The, yeah, beautiful. What's your name? Shooter. Shooter? I like that. I like that. Beautiful. Anybody else? Look at here. Here's what the Bible says. It says, if we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart that Jesus is alive, we'll be saved. Pretty simple, but it's really important. And so what I want to do, I want to pray with you. Can I pray with y'all? Y'all pray with us. And listen, if you raise your hand, you didn't come down, I just, just pray this prayer with us and you can get baptized later, but make sure that you get your heart right. That's the most important thing. Let's just pray. Just repeat after me, Shooter. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Lord, I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I invite you into my heart. I invite you into my life. From this day forward, I give my life to you. Help me to read my Bible, to pray, show up for church get baptized I love you Jesus teach me to love you more In Jesus name I pray amen I'm so proud for you now listen it's the same thing it's your same life but now you have help with your stuff and just go to him and talk to him and that's what prayer is all about but we can't help you if you don't keep showing up keep showing up Listen, go visit these guys over here for just a second, if you don't mind. I'm proud of you. Bless you. Bless you, buddy. You want to shake hands? I'm proud of you, baby. Stand with me, please. Thank you, Lord. I think part of our, part of our process of growth here in this church is we've been talking about uh, fishing for men and, 
and going out in the highways and byways and compelling them to come in. But you know, at the, at, at the airlines, they tell you to put the mask over yourself before you put it over somebody else. You gotta be healthy first. And I just wanna challenge everybody here today, take care of yourself and, and, and try to see yourself through God's eyes if that's possible. Because God sees so much value in you. Please listen to me. God sees so much value in you. And the devil wants to tear down what God wants to build up. Don't listen to the devil. You be good workers in the kingdom of God, and God will make a difference in your life forever. Amen? Yeah. Let's all raise our hands and surrender God. Let me just pray for you. Oh, we just lift everybody up here today. We lift up everybody watching online. We pray, Lord, today that you would uh, give us power from on high. Holy Spirit, baptize us in the Holy Spirit and give us, give us uh, power from on high, Lord, to go out into the highways and byways and compel them to come in. Help us, Lord, to be good ambassadors of your kingdom, Lord, not becoming too comfortable in this world, so comfortable that we forget about the value of your return. Lord, help us to be ready because we understand that you're going to come back to get us, and we're looking forward to that meeting in the air. And we love you, Jesus, and we thank you for it. In your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much for coming. We sure do love you. Got our prayer team up here. If you need special prayer, love to have you.